Hello everyone, welcome to another video of TCG Talk, and today we're going to be going over The Calling Cincinnati, which is this weekend. Um, for anyone that's not familiar with what The Calling is, Flesh and Blood hosts uh, professional events or open events for people to sign up for in different cities around the world. We had The Calling Las Vegas in the U.S. here recently, and we also had in Dallas. And then this weekend is Cincinnati, so it's, it's free for anyone to sign up, um, and you can earn elo possibly win some prizes win some money if you get high enough um and these events are for people to qualify for a future pro tour as well as the national event um and it's also just a, a fun event for people to go to um if i remember correctly the calling las vegas had like a thousand people there um and i think dallas had over 500 uh, participate so they're really big events they're awesome i know it's short notice but if you're in the cincinnati area definitely check it out but i just wanted to kind of give my um I guess predictions is the word, but more of just like my thoughts on the upcoming event and what it's going to be um, and how it's going to go. I know at the Calling Dallas, if any of you watched uh, Channel Fireball, who who is um, at the top of here, uh, they're the ones who stream it on Twitch. So if you want to check it out Saturday and Sunday, you can. Um, but I was watching a lot of it and it was a sealed event uh, that then went into drafts specifically with the Tales of Aria set. And then as you can see, this event's going to be a lot similar. Um, it's going to start with Tales of Aria Sealed, and it's going to consist of two days with 14 rounds of Swiss, cutting to the top eight. Um, day one is eight rounds of Swiss uh, with Sealed, and then they cut to the top 64, and then they do three rounds of booster drafts, um, and then cut the top 32. So after day one, it'll go for however many participants they have to the top 32. And then day two, uh, they're doing three rounds of draft that cut into the top eight, um, and then they do their top eight uh single elimination in order to see who wins um they also have side events if you want to play just classic instructed you know sealed's not really your thing or you know you're not as interested in the tales of varia set um you can do side classic instructed events i know at the last one prism one which should be really awesome to see you know i think at dallas there were six different heroes in the top eight which is definitely conducive of what everybody's been saying so far about the meta it's a very wide open meta right now um, but the Pro Quest event, you can win an Arcanite Skullcap, uh, I think, or I forgot what it is if you win the whole thing. I think it's Arcanite Skullcap and then a couple uh, prizes. Don't quote me on that. It's definitely a cash prize and like a certain card that you win. I know the winner of the Calling Dallas won a gold uh, Findle Spring Tunic, which he said he got graded, which is awesome. Um, they have different packages that you can buy, get play mats, limited edition play mats and stuff like that. Um, but the biggest thing for this is, is the format. So the Las Vegas was classic instructed. And then since then, Dallas and now Cincinnati are limited events that go in from sealed to draft, which is a whole different ball game, whole lot different than, you know, bringing your best classic instructed deck um, sealed and draft. You have to be able to think on the fly. You have to be able to make decisions about your deck on how you want to take it. Um, and you got to play with kind of what you got. So it's a lot different of a skill set. Um, I've always thought, especially draft of all modes is the most telling of who the best player is. That's just my opinion. Um, I think that it, it shows like who can think on their feet the best, who can kind of assess what other people are doing and who can play off of that and pivot properly and then also play their deck really well. So I enjoy it. Um, but yeah, still day, day one, as we said before, is sealed into booster draft. Um, you'll get, they'll get six packs, have to make a deck out of it. I know at the last bit, we saw a lot of briars. Um, the exact percentages, I don't think have came out, but I would guess it was 70 to 80% of the field was briars. Um, in sealed and draft, uh, but uh, Oldheim ended up winning the whole thing. So uh, it's actually very really interesting. Actually, the final was Oldheim versus Lexi. In the top eight, there was eight Briars, um, one Lexi and one Oldheim. Um, and the Lexi and Oldheim were the ones who actually made it to the final. So it's going to be really interesting to see if that stays the same. Briar definitely is the easiest hero to play out of sealed. Uh, her cards just work really well and really easy together. Oldheim... It's a little bit more difficult. You have to have the right amount of blues, the right amount of pitch and stuff like that. But you also kind of have to know how to play the deck. Um, like you can have everything you need, but if you don't know how to play Guardian or play Controly, um, it's a little bit more difficult. So that's why a lot of people don't play them as well. But I think personally, I think Old Time is still going to do really well. I think people, it actually might be a little bit more, um, a little bit more widespread on the heroes and who people pick because i think people are realizing that if you pick too many briars that it's going to um 
give whoever goes with Oldheim or Alexi just like free reign. I mean, if you were at Oldheim in the last event, you probably got every card you wanted because especially especially if you were Ice Oldheim because the Briars are picking Briar cards, Lightning, and Earth, and then a couple Lexi players are like mixing up Ice and Lightning. So if you did Ice Oldheim, you probably had the pick of the litter with your draft, especially in draft format, not so much in Sealed. Um, but yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how Sealed is. Personally, I think Briar will still kind of dominate the Sealed portion. But once we get the draft, I think you'll start seeing a little bit more even kill on all of the different, all the three heroes. Um, it's going to be really fun to watch, really interesting to see. And then this is the last event before the national event in Orlando. So it's going to be really cool to see. I hope they probably won't, but I hope they somewhat schedule maybe a stream for the side of it. I would like to see some of the classic instructed stuff go on. Like I said, Prism won last time and there was two Boltons and two uh, Bravos in the top eight. Uh, I think there was a Katsu and a Lexi um, and a Dash, I think, if I'm remembering correctly. So that's really awesome. Um, as you can see from main event, the prize is $1,200. You get a gold Findel Spring tunic and a, and a Pro Tour invite. Um, and then second's 1000 and it goes down from there. Uh, anyone in the top eight gets a Pro Tour invite, which I love. I think that's awesome that people are doing that. Um, and then for Classic Instructed, they're having the side event, which is a four round, four Swiss round. So if you, the you can't put too much um, stake in who's winning these side events. Like it is really good to see what heroes are doing well in a small sample size, but it is only four rounds of Swiss. Like it's not like a normal event where you're playing eight to 12 rounds. Um, so it, it's a small sample size, but it's cool to see what people are doing. Um, and it's just good there to see people play in flesh and blood, man. Like it's awesome to see this many people. I mean, Vegas had all the hype in the world and it had a thousand plus people and people were really interested to see what was going to happen with Dallas. Like if it was going to be the same reception because it wasn't quite as marketed as Vegas was, but having over 500 people at Vegas, I'm so excited to or not Vegas, but at Dallas, I'm so excited to see how much sense he has because Cincinnati is literally a week after Dallas. So it's going to be interesting to see how many people like travel to that event. If we see the similar faces, I'm assuming we'll see Matt Rogers from the APAC region. He's literally traveled over here to go to these events. So I definitely think he'll be there. Um, you might see me some other notable guys uh, going. I know that the winner from the last event, Nam, is going, I think. So it'll be interesting to see how those people do. Um, yeah, I'm just really excited about it. But let me know. This is a quick quick video to get my thoughts on it. Uh, let me know what you all think about the event, what you're excited most about, um, what hero you think is standing out, and, and what hero you're kind of placing your bets on to do well. Um, is there anything from the last event that you didn't see that you think people may be missing anything like that? Um, but yeah, let me know what y'all's thoughts are. I'd love to hear them and I will be in the stream, um, watching all of the matches that I can this weekend and, you know, just enjoying some flesh and blood. I can't wait till one. I'm not going to Cincinnati or, or Orlando as a player or as a spectator, but the first event of the new year, I want to go definitely, um, once everything slows down on my side of things, but yeah. Let me know what y'all think of the event coming up, and I will see you guys next time on TCG Talk. Thank y'all so much.